You know, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. The sermon that I've entitled tonight is called Praise in the Victory. Or actually, Victory in the Praise. Either way you want to say it. But I like to say Praise to Victory. So that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Praise yourself to your victory. Praise yourself despite the storms that you're going through. Praise yourself to the victory. You're going through issues and challenges like we all are. Praise yourself to the victory. Yeah, prayer is wonderful, but praise is is something else. Look at what that Bible verse talks about that it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. If you don't wake up in the morning and, you, and when you first open your eyes, you're not saying thank you, Lord. Something is not right with your connection with God. Because we're supposed to thank him. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. But in other words, the next level. Can we say next level? The next level of entering his heaven's gate is the court's. Where the the angels are roaming, where everything, the uh, uh, hallelujah, holy, holy, holy is 24-7. When you want to get there, you have to praise them. You have to praise them. Because praise gets the attention of God to help your situation. Praise helps you because I, I've heard it today from, from a couple of people, and I'm going to share it from myself as well. Every time you're in a circumstance, every time you're in a challenge, every time you have an issue in your life, when you just have the scenario to just force yourself to praise, something happens in the supernatural, something happens in the divine, something happens in the heavenlies that comes down and says, that's my child, that's my daughter, I got to bless them, I got to come to the forefront. And somehow, some way, hallelujah, your, your, your praises to God, it brings an aroma, it brings a romantic uh, uh, scenario to his nostrils, to his uh, ears, and all of a sudden, your circumstances your issues and your challenges are not that big of a deal anymore. Can we give him a clap praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, and one thing I've learned in my years of continuing wisdom and maturity is that uh, I'm never going to say old, but I'm going to say wisdom and maturity. But here's what I've learned. Not every battle is worth fighting. Some of us are fighting battles we have no business fighting. In fact, it's we're already won, but you're fighting it and fighting it and fighting it, taking away your energy constantly over and over and over and over. And that's one thing that I have learned. And, and I've learned that the hard way, that not every battle is worth fighting. And even if you win that battle, so now we're going to have Thanksgiving in a couple of days. If I don't say Thanksgiving to you personally, let me say it right now. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. God bless you guys. Yeah. Every day should be thanksgiving, right? Amen. Every day should be thanks living. Every day should be thankfulness to God. But anyway, thank, happy thanksgiving to you and your family. But now that you're going to meet your family and your loved ones for thanksgiving, every battle is not worth fighting. Every debate, well, I voted for Hillary, I voted for Trump, it's not worth fighting. Because even if you win that battle with your family member or that close person, what's the point? What are you going to get? You're going to get a, a, a relationship that now has become a, a wall, a wedge in the middle. And just because you won, I got the last word. That is not going to help you in your relationships with your family. No that not every battle is worth fighting. I used to have a prideful spirit that I had to win every battle. I had to have the last word. It ain't going to happen anymore because that's not how God created you to be. Every battle is not worth fighting for. You can pray for them. You can praise the Lord in the middle of the storm. Lord, I praise you that this family member is going to be saved one day. I thank you, Lord, for them. I praise her and, and, and let praise come out of your mouth. On a constant basis, on a constant basis. Because here's what I've learned. Critical spirits many times are not content. Critical spirits, gossiping spirits, uh, striving spirits, argumentative spirits, they're not content. They're not thankful many, many times. And when that happens, you get into the scenario that 
that it, it, you feel empty inside. You feel wasted after so much preparation over and over and over again. And so murmuring spirits have a way of deflating us. When you spend so much energy in trying to win the argument or trying to get your point across, it gets your energy out of the way. I've never met a person that loves to praise Jesus and be critical at the same time. That's why, amen. That's why you have to learn to give him praise instead of being critical because when you give him praise, the circumstance, the issue, the challenge that you're facing at the moment, the heartache, hey, that person that you felt you can trust for the rest of your life, all of a sudden that person has dropped you and you're now paralyzing your soul. Okay, Praise him while your soul is paralyzed and watch you walk in your soul again. But you have to understand that there's a power, there's victory in your praise. Turn with me, please, to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, verse 20. 2 Chronicles, uh, verse 20. I'm going to give you a chance to get there. And as you're getting there to 2 Chronicles, uh, chapter 20, I wanted to first, because some people ask me this, uh, uh, at one point they have asked me this. There's three, three things here. You got adoration, you got worship, and you got praise. Adoration is kind of like to worship as a divine, like God is divine, he's worthy. Uh, it's kind of like a, a deep re- reverence towards God. That's adoration. I, I've done that in the morning. Father, I adore you. And now comes Another part, which is called worship. Worship is slower. It's more intimate. Worship is a a reverence for the the God Almighty, is intense devotion, like that he's the almighty, honorable God. And and so, you know, we give him that. Now, praise is faster. Praise comes from our heart, is expressive. Uh, And so when we give God praise, what's happening is, He's a, when he approves it, if your heart is right, I'll get to that in a second. That's why he says, enter your gates with thanksgiving. If your heart is not right, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you can't go into the courts with praise because your heart's not right and your praise is not going to be approved by God. So God wants you to enter his gates, the first entry, with thanksgiving, a thankful heart, a non christian a heart, a loving heart, a heart for God, a contentment in your heart. He wants to have a pure heart, a heart for God. And then you can praise him and say, Father, I praise you for all that you've done. You're a wonderful God. Now you've entered his courts. God sees and says, that's approval that I have worship. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I just got a flash right now. Look, let me say something. Do you know what the name Judah means? The word Judah, or let me rephrase it, the name Judah means praise. In the Bible, one of the disciples, his name was Judas, praise. I'm going to step on some toes here, but this is for your glory, for your, for, for your glory, for you can go to glory to glory. Many of our praise has betrayed God. Judas betrayed Jesus. The, uh, Judas' name means praise. A lot of us come to church, and unless the pastor says, can we say hallelujah? Everybody, you know, hallelujah. Can we say amen? Amen. And can we give a clap off? Everybody starts to clap. Yeah, but you're doing it, copying other people's behavior. It's not coming from your heart. The name Judah means praise. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. So when I, I hope that uh, starting... Today, well, we've already started it the last couple of weeks with uh, the, the, the Rise Up Praise and Worship team. But starting, uh, it's, it's kind of like, like a snowball effect that will carry on to 2017. That this ministry, that this church, when they come into these, the, when they anchor up and they come in and they sit down or stand up, that they may give God praise because when you do that, he, he gives you the approval. The victory is yours even before the battle or while the battle is going on. And you're going to have authority and dominion and power in your life. And so Judas means praise. But there was a Judas in the, in the discipleship in the 
in the inner circle of Jesus that betrayed Jesus. Many times our praise is, oh well. You see, he was involved, but he wasn't expressive. He was in the inner circle, but he wasn't really all in. Uh, Judas was never all in for Jesus. But because part of him, he would be with the Pharisees. And when he was with the Pharisees, he was a Pharisee. When he was with Jesus, he was a disciple. But Judas had a heart issue. I wonder if some of us come to church and we're wondering and we're looking at other people behaving. Well, I guess they're clapping. I'm going to clap too. I guess they're saying amen, amen, hallelujah. Okay, they're not. Okay, I'll put it down. Yeah. Why can't you just like open yourself up? Give God Almighty your heart and say, Lord, I praise you. I praise you for what you've done to me. I praise you for what you're doing to me. I praise you in the storm. I praise you in my trouble. I praise you in my issues. I praise you in my circumstance. You are the God Almighty. I give you praise, Lord Father. I give you praise, Lord Jesus. Let it be from your heart that it may be a praise that he may see approval and that he may bless you in a mighty way that leads to your victory. Amen. Give God a clap offering. Don't be looking around. Just give God a clap offering. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to have some fun here. But uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, I, you know, I wonder if we only praise God or we lift our hands. Or I wonder if we clap, say hallelujah. I wonder if we, only, if we do that when we're alone. Man, I haven't even started with my message, and I'm just, I'm just throwing, I'm throwing some bombs over here. But I, I wonder if some of you come to church, you're like Judas. You, you, you kind of like uh, people. They see that you're in the inner circle. They see that you come to this church. They see that you're part of Rise Up Outreach Ministry. But here's the thing. I wonder if in the solitude of your home, I wonder if in your car, I wonder wherever you go, I wonder if sometimes you just say. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Or is it only when you come to church? Let's praise him. Because you are fighting battles that you have no business fighting. You're fighting battles that are taking the energy out of you when all you need to do is just praise the King of kings and Lord of lords. You wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do is call your girlfriend or get on Facebook or do whatever. The first thing in the morning you got to do is give him praise, give him glory, give him honor, and that your day is already settled in between. That your day, is, your day already has a grip, that you're already anchored in the rock of your salvation. That you start, when you start your day like that, your mind is set. Yeah, how can the devil come after you? That's why there's so much depression and so much aggression and so much bitterness and so much stuff going around. Because people just don't take the time to praise God in the morning. Thank God in the morning. They just don't do that. And so here's a story of King Jehoshaphat. There was a battle that was about to take place. And he was all nervous. But look at the instructions that God gave him. And I'm going to start reading in verse 1, chapter 20. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you. How many of you have enemies against you? Don't raise your hands. That's okay. The, from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazanan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. He feared. Hey, listen, we're normal. We're human. We've all had moments of fear. I wonder what's going to happen. It continues reading. And set himself to seek the Lord. So what was the first thing that Jehoshaphat did? He feared. In other words, it's normal. It's normal for you to have a moment of fear, but don't stay there. It's normal. Immediately, your next reaction should be a reaction of thankfulness and praise, seeking the Lord Almighty. And so it says, 
And Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself. In other words, he took time from his busy schedule to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all of Judah. Judah, uh, we'll get back to that in a second. So Judah, Judah gathered together to ask from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. Verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand, is there not power and might so that one is able to withstand you? It continues in verse 7. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? Let's pause there for a second. We'll continue with that story in a second. But a praise spirit and a thankful spirit knocks on your doors to victory, which I'm going to share in a few minutes. Praise and thankfulness, which is part of your prayer, of course. That's why when I tell people to pray, uh, I use the word acts, A-C-T-S, A-C-T-S. Acts, adoration. C, confession. T, thankfulness. And S, supplication. When, when I, in that first part, adoration. I never approach the kingdom of God. I never approach my prayer. Father, I come to you. I need this, I need this, I need this, and I need this. I always approach them with thankfulness and praise. In other words, adoration. Enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Because we cannot constantly be in fear like King Jehoshaphat was on an ongoing, everyday basis. At some point in your fear, at some point in your struggle, at some point in your issues, at some point in whatever you're going through, you have to understand you've got to give your life to God and seek him while you're hurting. When you start your day with prayer and praise, let's, let, let's all say that together. When we all, when we all uh, let, let's, let's make it more personal. When I, I start, my day start my day in prayer and praise, prayer and praise. My, day my day starts with power, starts with power. Leading, leading to victory. victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So I got five ways here that I want to give you, if you have a paper and pen, uh, to praise your life to victory. Five ways. I was trying to put them together, but here's five simple ways that you can write down, go back, review them over and over. Don't just write them one time and then never check again. But here's five ways that we can do to have a victorious life. Number one, seek the Lord. Very simple. King Jehoshaphat right here is feared, but then the, it continues on, and he seeked the Lord. He seeked the Lord. In other words, establish a purpose when you encounter a problem. Establish a mindset when you encounter a problem. You know, instead of living in fear and whatnot, establish a mindset when you're about to get into that. Because my purpose is for you today is for you to grow and live victorious in Jesus' mighty name without feeling on a constant basis that you are a failure. I want you as your pastor, as your friend, whatever you want to call me, I want you to live in victory and in love. I want you to live with power and not in defeat and not look at you as a failure because you just can't get over these humps or these obstacles that are hitting you in your life. And so I got five ways here. You got to write them down. Some people are writing, some people are not. Some people are putting in your, in, your, in, your, in your cell phone. That's all good. But establish a pattern because you can turn your issues, you can turn your problem, you can turn your challenge into an opportunity for God. And look at what uh, Hebrews 4.14 said. Because notice that as, uh, the, as I was reading here that... King Jehoshaphat didn't turn to, the, to God. 
King Jehoshaphat didn't turn to God when all hell was already going loose. He turned to God immediately right before the battle. Right before the battle. Hey, 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 Pastor, it's too late. I've been in this battle for two months. Okay, start praising him and thanking him and, pr and praying now. But uh, at least give yourself a chance. Look at what Hebrews 4.14 says. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confessions. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize, in other words, Jesus sympathized, with our weakness. Oh, pastor, they're calling me weak. Yes, we're all weak in need of a shepherd. We're all weak in need of a savior. We're all weak in need of a defender. We're all weak in need of, a, of, the, of the one that's the way, the truth, and the life. We're all weak in need of a king. We're all weak in, and, and because we need him to rescue us. We can't get life together outside of his will. I've already tried. Some of you are still trying to figure it out, but I'm not going to figure it out anymore. I'm my, the rest of my years, I've made up my mind. I'm in the will of God. That's where you get your victory. But some of you are still trying to figure it out. That's okay. It took me 40 plus years to figure it out too. But once I went all in, I said, no way. This is the best life. Nothing outside of God's will will give you the inner satisfaction that your soul needs. Nothing. Nothing. So Jesus, the high priest, thank you, Jesus, sympathizes with our weakness, but was in all points tempted. Whatever you're tempted with, he was tempted. As we are yet without sin. The thing is, we have sinned. He hasn't. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't need to be shy. You don't need to be ashamed. You don't need to be guilty. Oh my God, I can't get it together, Pastor. I just sinned over here. I sinned over there. I can't. Approach his throne with confidence. Approach his throne with boldness. Let it, he says it here, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. Here we are. We're getting out of focus, trying to win over all of our critics and getting angry and whatnot. We're not. Uh, uh, this is for somebody. Hear me closely. Listen up. We're not supposed to be in fight mode all the time. Sometimes we just got to surrender it to God. Sometimes you just got to pray and praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes you just got to turn your face and just shut up and pray more, praise more, and let the battles be the Lord's. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Give, hallelujah. You can give him a clap offering if you want. Uh, number two, examine your past and what God has done for you. Prayer, I've noticed, I mean praise, I've noticed that it gives you a different perspective from, in other words, when we're praising God, when we're praying to God, it gives you a different perspective because all of a sudden your view becomes elevated. So when your view is elevated, the problems and the issues that you're facing down here are not overwhelming to you. But as long as you stay trying to fight them in the natural, in the flesh down here, your issues and your problems become bigger than what they really should be. But when you start to praise, but when you start to pray, when you start to worship, when you start to add adoration, all of a sudden you come up and, and, and your mindset, your perspective is different and you see things from a different angle. Like an eagle, he rises up above the storms. He doesn't hang out with the chickens and pigeons. He rises up, and then he sees the storms, and he's like, okay, I'll come back when it's over. Let us be like that in our mindset, that we can actually fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Set our eyes on Jesus. Because all of a sudden when you do that, the problem comes and it hits you. Bah! Oh, you're hurt. And immediately when you fix your eyes on Jesus, that issue becomes small. If we could only get that. If we could only get that. But you see, a lot of us, we're walking around without a spirit of praise. Because the world has gotten the best punch out of us. And so our souls, instead of like waking up, we praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, here we go. I got to go to work again. Oh. Here you go. Oh, the, 
uh, my spouse, uh, man, I can't stand them. You know, uh, oh, you know, my wife. Uh, and we start murmuring, we start complaining. You know, uh, the Israelites were rescued from Egypt, and they were in the desert. It, it was really supposed to be an 11-day journey. And, and you know, and, and, but Jesus was like, nope, they're still complaining, they're still murmuring. They don't get it together. They don't give me praise. They don't give me adoration. They don't give me worship. Go around the mountain again. And, and all 40 years, when it should have been an 11-day journey, because they didn't want to submit to the will of God. See, it's not complicated. It's really two things you got to do. Submit to God and resist the devil. The devil is going to come hammering you all the time. But you got to resist him. But how could you resist him if you're not submitting to the word of God? So you want to resist him without the power in the word of God. It ain't going to work. you got to do both. Submit to the will of God and resist him. In Jesus' name, I rebuke you, Satan. Oh, you, you want to attack me? You want a piece of me? Oh, I praise you, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. I don't got to go toe-to-toe with the devil. He'll whip my butt. He will. All I got to do, oh, you want a piece of me? Oh, stand by. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. And all of a sudden, we look, look at He's gone. Submit to God and resist the devil. It's not that complicated. How do you submit to God? Oh, Father, I praise you. I, I, I want to do your will. But many of us are walking defeated, not in victory, because... We want to resist a devil without the power of God in us. We want to resist. It doesn't work. You've got to submit to the will of God, and then it will happen. Praise and worship, they go hand in hand. In other words, you're magnifying and you're glorifying his name. Praise, a lot of times, has to do with laughter, has to do with dancing. David danced upon the Lord. Uh, they, you know, and, and, you know, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. When, when you're in praise mode, I look at myself and I look at my creator and I'm like, man, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm going to praise you, Lord. I'm not Pastor Eddie. I'm not, you know, two bachelors. Or, well, I don't care. No, you don't care about that. Nobody. Oh, yeah, well, I'm the CEO. No, 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 no. When you praise the name of Jesus, pride has to submit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship is more intimate. There's adoration. There's a, kind of like more mellow, more slower. But, but praise, there's uh, laughter, there's dancing. There, it's just a complete happiness in his presence. So it, it's just a beautiful thing. Above sickness, pray him, praise him. Your son, your daughter is acting all jacked up. Praise him, praise him. They don't want to know anything about God. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Pray, 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 pray. It's all a combination. And when you praise and worship at the same time, God is saying, I approve that. Here's your blessings. And many times the blessings come in a suddenly moment. But you have to submit to God and you have to resist the devil. In Jesus' mighty name. Check the AC, check the AC. So anyway, number two, examine your past and what God has done for you. Uh, God didn't save you to abandon you. His name, his name is the great I am, not the great I was. It's the great I am. That means he's there in your present, in your past, and in your future. He's been there all along. He's the great I am. How many of you have seen God rescue you from stuff in your past? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we give him a praise? Hallelujah. Let's all together say, I, I praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, you know, uh, one of my favorite evangelists, Reynard Bunky. Uh, I have my cousin here with me. He's one of his favorites as well. And Reynard Bunky is a, one of the biggest evangelists in, in Africa. Whenever he starts his sermons, whenever he starts his preachings, he starts off with hallelujah. Because that name, hallelujah, that word hallelujah, it causes demonic oppression to just have to leave. And it's pronounced the same way no matter what language. You go to China, you go to India, you go wherever. Hallelujah is the same name. 
Hallelujah. And that's why you've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed sometimes, but before I'm about to get the stage and preach, I yell out, Hallelujah! It's a praise declaration. So that if there's a little demonic spirit that's trying to, to, to distract or trying to derail the, the sermon from doing what it's got to do, it's going to say, oh, no, I don't belong here. I got to go. I got to go. Fight less and praise more your way to victory. Amen. Number three, find a promise in the word of God and stand out there. There's so many promises. You're absolutely right. But find, can, can you find three Bible verses and try to memorize them? Well, Pastor, that's kind of hard. Oh, really? Okay. Excuses or results. You can't get both. Can you find three Bible verses? Three Bible verses. And, le- and, and three promises. Well, uh, Pastor, uh, I, I need a promise for my spouse. I need a promise for my son. I need a promise for my job. There's three of them out there. Look them up, uh, uh, go into uh, Google, Bible verses about da, 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 whatever is your issue. Memorize it, stick to it. Well, Pastor, I got, a, I got a, a sickness issue. Find a Bible verse about health, stick to it, declare it, speak it, let it come out of your mouth. Praise and prayer in the meantime, adore him in the meantime, worship in the, in the meantime, and you're going to see that your battle, or better yet, the battle in your mind, your thinking will become differently. Your thinking will change. And because a lot of it is your view. Our victory does not depend on our abilities. A lot of people think it depends on our abilities, but it's not. It's not our responsibility that always works. But it's our response to God's ability. Let me say that again. It's not our responsibility to try to make it work. It's our trust. It's our belief. It's our lack of doubt, lack of, uh, uh, lack of unbelief. It's our belief. It's our faith. It's our trust in God that we do trust in his ability to help us in our time of need. The desire, I know that some of you right here, and listen, is very normal once again. The whole battle is right here. How can I say this? Being half political correct and, and half real. Keep it real? 100%? Okay. Every struggle that we have, listen carefully, and those who are watching online and hearing me on the radio, every struggle we have, every struggle we're about to partake, every time you have a struggle, somehow, some way, our thinking wants to go back to our past. Instead of your thinking, wanting to go back to your past, praise him to victory. At that moment, well, pastor, I don't feel like it. The club. It's not about feeling. Even if you have to force yourself to praise, praise the name of Jesus, and you will see victory come to you, and you not struggling so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because a lot of us are, are continue over and over. We go to church, but we're not changing. You know, constantly. Uh, we're praying, but we're doubting. We're reading his word, but we're not set free. We, and it's got continuing struggle, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you're constantly looking for the good in the outside of people, but you're not humble. And, and it just continues to work as such. Uh, you may smell good, but you're not heaven ready. So all good things come to those who wait is not really true. Sometimes you have to be in the word because a lot of people say all good things come to those wait. Sometimes it doesn't, but you still got to trust the great I am, not the great I was. And so, yeah, a lot of us are more focused on speaking in tongues instead of speaking to our neighbors. Our neighbors, many times they're like, he's a Christian, she's a Christian. I want nothing to do with that. Because your pride, your ego, 
It's not a spirit of love. It's not a spirit of compassion. It's not a spirit that, that, uh, that you should have for thy neighbor. You, you, know, you have a tendency to uh, look more or turn more to the news than turn from your sins. And so you are unable to resist the devil. You are unable to submit to God because of your choices. Your praise is not really all that because you're, you're kind of like almost have Novocaine in your soul. You have to snap out of it. You have to rise up above that. Force your way to a, to a, a praise. Do something so that the victory will come to you. Do something so that you may be free inside. Do something. Number four, and we'll be done. Two more will be done. So it's time to rise up, child of God. Praise your way to, to victory and represent him better. Number four is stay humble. Oh, my God, so complicated. <laughs> Praise open God's heart to you and our heart towards him. Listen, listen. It took me many years to understand, to embrace praise. It took me a lot of years because I thought that was for women. L let me hear the word. I just want the word. I don't need to praise him. But you'll see me here every Thursday. You'll see me here every week. Praise in the name of Jesus. You'll see me. I want you to do it too. So that you may have victory in your battles. The victory, can we, can, can we say this together? The victory, the victory. is already won. already won. Let me just praise him. If you can just do that. If you can just do that. King Jehoshaphat, you noticed in the Bible that we just read, that he didn't strut around, he didn't go around with a cocky attitude. He was actually humble. He wanted to seek the Lord. Uh, uh, Instead of admitting his strength, he actually said, Lord, what can we do? Aren't you the God that, that did this and that? You know, I love when cocky, arrogant people. How many of you are into UFC fighting? Okay, you, UFC fighting? Okay, uh, so, I mean, I, I'm into boxing, UFC. I like a, I like a little bit of that. I, I used to box, so I, used to, I, I like that. But how many of you know who Conor McGregor is? Okay, he's a... You know, he's a Probably the best UFC fighter out there right now. But, but, you know, when the guy wins, you know, you see him, you know. <laughs> arrogant. Cocky. Upesau is the right word. <laughs> I love a few months ago when he got clocked by that guy, whoever that guy was. I can't remember his name right now. But yeah, Diaz, when he got clocked and he lost, how he humbled himself. He was so quiet for the next fight. He was so like, like lame. And, and now he won. He's back again at it. <laughs> God wants your praise, but he also wants you to be humble. Be humble for the Lord. And last, to finish up. Last. Be, uh, because if we're going to continue to stay in sin... In other words, not submit to the word of God. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice. You know, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Death to your soul. Death to your relationships. Death to your finances. Death to something. Because the Wages, what you pay when you pick up something, when you do something outside of the will of God. Pastors don't preach this because it doesn't fill the seats. Thank God we got the, the seats filled tonight. But, uh, but you know what? Most pastors don't preach about sin. They just preach about grace, about hope, and all that. But they don't preach about sin because those two, grace and hope, without talking about what's keeping you without the blessing that you deserve, it's not right. It's, it's, I'm doing you a, I'm lying to you. And so the wages of sin is death to your soul, to your life, to your family, to something, something surely sooner or later is going to come out dead. And I may, I don't know what it is. So if the wages of sin is death, why don't you quit before payday?
Why don't you quit before payday? Quit doing what you're doing before payday. So that you can have all that God has for you. Amen. Amen. And lastly, lastly, say, thank you, Pastor, you finally finished. Lastly, <laughs> what are five ways to praise him? Engage and express your praise. In other words, romancing God. Before the battle even begins, Jehoshaphat offered praises to God. Now let's go back to that. Let's go back to 2 Chronicles 20. 2 Chronicles 20. And finish up the story. Because there's simply nothing more important than worship in preparing for battle problems. The man who kneels or the woman who kneels before God can't stand before any problem. The man or woman that kneels before God can stand no matter what problem comes their way. Hallelujah. And look at what I'm going to go into. Uh, let me go into verse 18. Verse 18. And it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. Isn't that a sign of humility? Adoration? Anyway. And all Judah... And the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord. They worshiped the Lord. Notice that you don't see no swords, no knives, no guns, nothing. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of Korahites, help me Lord, stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Who told you that church has to be silent? Listen, do not let unthankfulness, do not let a heart that doesn't praise God keep you in circles. Praise, can we say it together? Praise, praise. Is, the is the ladder to the miraculous. Praise is the ladder to the miraculous. I continue, I, I, you know, when people say, well, you know, shh, you're in church. No. It says here, with voices loud and high. How big is your problem? How big is your issue, your challenge that you're facing right now? Do you think that the enemy, if he hears you in your praise, which is the ladder to your victory, uh, do you feel that that's going to uh, cause him to leave you alone or cause you to bring the heat even harder? No, he's going to leave you alone. It continues in verse 20. So they rose early in the morning. This is why it's so important to praise God and pray to God early in the morning. And they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, sing to the Lord. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, those that sing in the Rise Up uh, worship team. Thank you. And when they, he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing. Some people don't belong in the altar to sing. So it's wisdom to put the right people that know how to sing. Hey, pastor, I want to sing. Well, let me hear you. No, you can't sing. I'm sorry. You can, sing in your, you can sing in your shower, you can sing in the congregation, but no. Listen, God comes. God comes. I'm almost finished, but hear me closely. God comes where he's welcome, not where he's tolerated. Amen? Are you going to praise God when you're alone in your car? Hey, a couple of people, with that movie, uh, what was that movie, Fireproof, where the guy would, took out the PC that was causing him to look at porno and stuff. He gets a PC, he puts it in the yard, he starts bashing the PC, and all of a sudden the neighbor's like, that's happened to me in my car. Praise you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Lord. And I turn around and the lady's like, it's okay. It's all good. Praise him when you're alone. 
Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him in the evening. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Uh, I want to have victory every day of, your li- of my life. I don't know about you. Do you want the victory in your life? Victory in your finances? Victory in your children? Victory in everything? Praise the name of Jesus. Give Him a shout out praise right now. Give Him a shout out praise right now. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. When you're alone, it's okay to say hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Good word, pastor. Praise the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, speak. Expressive. I know some of you are still like, ah, I'm not there yet. It's okay. It took me 40 years. You'll catch up if you really let God do the work in your life. So God wants a heavenly atmosphere in this church He wants a heavenly atmosphere in your job as best as you can be. He wants a heavenly atmosphere in your home. He wants a heavenly atmosphere with you and your children. He wants a heavenly atmosphere with you and your family. So praise Him, not criticize. Praise Him, not complain. Praise Him, not murmur. Praise, pray, do what you got to do. But praise Him more and complain and bitter less and you will see victory in your life. Amen? Amen. So, number 21, it says, and when he had consulted, well, we we talked about that already. He sang to the Lord. Not everybody can sing, we know. And who should praise the beauty of holiness? As they went out before an army and were saying, praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing, when Sandra begins to sing, when Angela begins to sing, when Nick uh, begins to sing, when when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people that came against Jehoshaphat. So whatever issue we have here, the praise starts getting itself established and it comes against anything that's trying to knock off the radio ministry, anything that's trying to knock off this ministry, anything that's trying to knock off the miracle that's about to come into your life and knocks off the healing that's about to come into your life. Praise sets the atmosphere in a heavenly fashion so that you can get your miracle. Amen? So now when they began to sing... And to praise the Lord, they set an ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And they were defeated. No swords. They were just defeated with praise. For the people, check that out. How did it happen, Pastor? I'm going to tell you right now. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. In other words, enemies that were of Jehoshaphat became enemies of each other. And they went against each other to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude, and there were there dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, in other words, the stuff that was there, they found among them an abundance of valuables and the dead bodies. And precious jewelry. In other words, what was for the unrighteous became to the righteous, which they stripped off for themselves more than they can carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoils. That's a lot of stuff. That, because they were as much. Hallelujah. You know, one time, true story, my parents were on vacation with my brothers. And I was working. And somehow that day, I came home early. And when I came home early... There was a man in my backyard. There was a man. And so you hear the story, right? That the, the enemies of Jehoshaphat came against each other. But uh, instead of attacking Jehoshaphat, they were praising and singing to the Lord. So they turned around and killed each other. When they were supposed to kill the army of Jehoshaphat, they killed each other. And then when Jehoshaphat went, they were all dead. So they started taking their jewelry and whatnot from them. And I can relate with a story that happened 25 years ago, I got home early. I, instead of coming home at 5.30 or so, I got home like at 3.30. I don't know why. I think I had done. Whatever. And I got home, and I see a guy in my backyard. I'm like, what's that guy doing there? I see my mailbox all twisted, like he had messed around with the mailbox. And I'm like, okay, well, what's going on here? So I, I got in the house. I locked it real good, and I looked in the back, and he's going through the garbage can. 
And I'm like, what is this guy doing here? And so then, I don't know, I, I wouldn't do this today. Today I would have a, a weapon of some type. But I, I went out there, and I approached the man. And I said, excuse me, all this in Spanish. But I approached him, I go, uh, what are you doing here? He goes, no, no, uh, I, I was married to Lloyd Alonso, my mom. I'm like, damn, mom never told me that. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, my mom was married before my dad? I got to know this joker. I go, well, what do you mean you were married to my mom? My mom was only married once, and here I am debating with the guy. You know, like, that was like really, yeah. And the guy goes, and, but, then it, but then it hit me. Oh, this guy saw the name of one of the male, of one of the male and he started talking trash about, you know, that he was married to him. I'm like, really? Oh, you were? And all of a sudden, I, I kind of acted dumb. I go, okay, uh, all good. I went back into my house. I got a big old butcher knife, put it in the back. And, uh, but before I did that, I called the cops. And I, I go, hey, you know, there's an intruder in my property. They're about to come in and whatnot. Uh, I need you to, to come by ASAP. We'll be right there. The cops showed up like in five minutes. Unbelievable. And so, but I was back there already, and I had my knife. And I'm like, hey, uh, um, you need to leave, bro. And what I should have I stayed inside. But anyway, long story short, I was there, and the guy all of a sudden starts getting aggressive with me. And he starts, and I'm like, well, do I fight this guy? Is it worth it? Every time growing up, you know, in bad neighborhoods and whatnot, I would always calculate, is this fight worth it? Is this fight worth it? Because I don't mind beating your behind, but then are you going to come after me with a gun? Or are you going to, like, seek revenge? So many times I would walk away unless I was put in a corner, and then, yeah, that was it. But a, a lot of times, so I see this guy getting animated, get, getting very aggressive. So I'm like, you know, I better go inside. This guy is not well in the head. So I go back inside. The cops come. All of a sudden, I go, open the door. He's, like, screaming. I'm like, this guy, is not, he's knocking at the door. He's kicking the door. He breaks the, we had, they had railings in there. He gets a crowbar, and he opens, the, like, the, 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 the crowbar doors. And all of a sudden, the cops showed up. He gets arrested, and um, there was a, his car was parked in the driveway, and, and he gets arrested, and I see the handcuffs, and he was on the floor while the cops were doing their research. I go, look, man, he messed up my, my window over here at my parents' house. Uh, there's some cost here, there's no, and all of a sudden, I start calculating, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, let's turn the tables around here, like King Jehoshaphat here. I went into his car. I took all the, all the he had like a, a bunch of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> My, I, I look like Santa Claus. I had like some, some big old quarters over here. You know, I go, he's going to pay for that window because nobody's going to pay for that window. And so he's going to pay. And, and I went, he had, he had like four birds that were, I guess, very dear to him. And, I, I, and he goes, whatever you do, he tells the cops, whatever you do, uh, I, I want those birds. I go, no, I'm going to have them for dinner tonight. <laughs> they, they got, but anyway, uh, I, I said that. I was in the flesh a little bit. But uh, the, the point is, Jehoshaphat, they went back, everything, everybody was killed, and he took the remains. I, I, I took some of those quarters to pay for the expenses of the guy. You know, the, the guy so happened to be a, a famous guy from a family, a famous family. And he was in my house trying to steal, trying to get in. And so the point I'm trying to say is that if you can praise your way to victory, no matter what comes your way, you're going to feel victorious, not just some days, but every day of your life. But it's sad to know that many of us are walking in defeat because of our lack of praise. Many of us are walking in defeat because of our life is not a life of praise. Praise infuses us. Praise infuses us and confuses the devil. It confuses the devil when you're talking to an enemy that doesn't like you and you're showing love and compassion to that enemy. It confuses him. And so I want you to have a life where when the problems attack, do it God's way, not your way. Because when you do it God's way, you praise him and you pray, victory will come and provision will come for your life. With all heads bowed and eyes closed. I'd like to take a brief moment to say 
that if this ministry has inspired you in any way, shape, or form, I'd like to ask you to consider and pray about sowing a donation or an offering towards it. The money used will be to improve our broadcasts that are being brought to you, to impact the kingdom of God further, and to help those that are walking in bondage and captivity be rescued, renewed, and restored. Another way you could cooperate to the ministry is by purchasing my book, Bless, Balance, and Complete, which will encourage you to rise higher in your Christian faith. Simply visit the link provided there on your screen for more information. Praise I like be in your lips, be in your tongue, be in your mouth, be in your heart, be in your bones. Let praise be something so wonderful.